All right, Dan the Ultra Dad here. All right, so it's lunchtime again. Another lunch run over here at Twin Creek. And another episode of the deep dive into my first 100 miler. And today's topic is gonna be an interesting one. It's not one that I really put a lot of thought into post-race, but it's one that I thought a lot about before the race. And that is my training plan. What worked, what didn't work? Did I run enough, did I not run enough? Was it too intense? Probably not, I can tell you that for now, right now. Or was it too easy? What could be done better in the future? All these things we will discuss. But first, let's run. How's it going? Thank you. You're fine. <laughs> Have fun. On a little walk break right now and I thought I might tease a little bit with what my training plan was like let's just say there were elements of it that were not traditional but more useful for a guy like me who I've got kids I've got a very very busy schedule so I have to make the most of what I have so if that's you, this might be a great plan for you. That was a solid effort. I really pushed it at the end. I did a clockwise Twin Creek Orange Loop in 58 minutes and 48 seconds. All right, so we will see you back in the house. What's up everybody, Dan the Ultra Dad here, and uh, we're back in the basement now. Um, so today's episode is all about um, my Mohican 100 training plan, um, how it went, uh, what I originally planned and how I executed it um, running up to my Mohican 100 race. So, you know, this was a, an interesting training plan, it, a little bit different. Really, I, I'm calling it the couch to 100 mile training plan uh, because um, it was a fairly short training plan and um, it was 12 weeks long. So, there was some, you know, and definitely some initial fitness prior to beginning it. So in some ways it's not really couched to 100 miler, but I started pretty slow and I worked up my mileage. I didn't really get super, super long mileage. So in the end, um, you know, my mileage per week really wasn't that much. Um, so 
I think I got up to 68 miles per week. Not a whole lot considering I was doing a hundred mile race, but it worked out okay. And you know, I wasn't trying to be, my plan wasn't designed to make me super fast, competitive even. You know, the goal was simply to finish my first hundred mile race. So that's what I did and it worked out really well. Um, in the past when I've run races, even like 50 K, you know, races, I just kind of, you know, run as much as I can up to the race and then, <laughs> and then go for it. So, um, this hundred mile race I did, the Mohican 100 was a little bit different. I did have some, some planning. I did have some, you know, uh, some strategy and how I was going to train because I realized, you know, because I had failed in the past with running a hundred miler, I realized that I really did need to, um, you know, did really need to think about my strategy and also design it for for me um, you know so i'm a guy that i have a job i work i work all week i have limited time to to run and that's the the challenge of it all when you're talking about training for a super long race like a hundred mile ultra marathon so there's three things that i think i i, I you know had some purpose in how I was going to train for this race. The first thing is, you know, slow um, and gradual increase in mileage. So that's the first thing I focused on. So I started with, you know, six to eight miles on Saturday and then five to six miles on Sunday. And I was doing back-to-backs on weekends typically. Um, so I started slow and I gradually increased those mileages as we went from week to week. So, you know, the next weekend I might do eight miles on Saturday and five on Sunday, and then the next 15 on Saturday and, you know, eight on Sunday. So sometimes my Saturdays were longer, sometimes, sometimes my Sundays were longer. And then during the week, I would just run some maintaining mileage, you know, three, four mile runs during lunch. Uh, occasionally I'd be able to run in the evening at home. So, you know, that's kind of the way I, the strategy I had. So that brings me to my second point, which was a weekend focus. I realized for me, I really couldn't emphasize, you know, the weekdays very well. Um, it just wasn't working with all with things that were going on with the family and with work mostly. So I really heavily emphasized the weekend running um, the Saturdays and Sundays. And I knew that that might be a weakness in my plan because you really do need to be running almost every day of the week if you're training for a hundred miler or for any ultra marathon. But I decided that, you know, just, you know, as a, as a way to maybe not stress out about the training, um, I would focus on those two days. And in the end, it worked out. So that's my second thing, the weekend focus. And then the third thing that I I tried to you know make sure I was um, I was focusing on was um, was flexibility. So again, going back to my 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 lifestyle, my day to day, uh, had a lot going on, and so I wanted to make sure that you know on those weekend runs I made sure and did the Saturday and Sunday. But if I had something going on, I didn't give up. I instead I had to. Makes carve out some time on Friday. So if let's say I had some activity on on Saturday or Sunday, I might not be able to run on Saturday or Sunday, or might not be able to run much. So I would go ahead and decide on Friday or Monday to carve out the time to make sure it got done. So you know the third major thing again is uh, flexibility. Don't give up, and you know you have to make it work. You got to make something else work in your schedule. Um, you try your best to do those weekend runs, but if you can't, you got to figure it out. So those were the three things. Well, you know, let's take a look real quick at my calendar and at my, what I actually did on Strava, and I'll show you. You know, basically, I was doing, as I mentioned before, trying to really emphasize my weekend running. So in August, uh, Saturday and Sunday, in August, I was running August 29th and 30th. I had a back-to-back -back 14 and 10. And then the next week, 17 and 13, and that's what I kept doing, just gradually increasing mileage um, on the weekends. So I had, that's Mohican training week three, you see, 20 and 15. Uh, I did a 21 and a 12. So you see here a rest day. It really wasn't on purpose. It's because we had something going on that day. So I did my, my, my super long run, my 21.4 mile run on Friday. We had 12. Now I backed down a little bit, did a 15 and a 6. And then I did this 50K, so I only ran once that weekend on the Friday, 31. And then we're into October. 
so October 9th, 10th, and 11th, I did what's I did my I did a a hundred k, but it was a hundred k divided up, and I'll talk more about it here in a minute. But I, it was a hundred k divided up between three days. I did um, on Friday, I did two runs, about ten each. Saturday a twenty, and then Sunday about a twenty. I called it my twenty twenty weekend, twenty 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 weekend, which was about a hundred k in one weekend. And so that was kind of my last super long run before Mohican one hundred. So then I, I really took time. I, I really tapered off. I did a little bit of running the next week. Probably shouldn't have tapered quite as much, but I really wanted to make sure my body was healthy. And so then you see my Mohican 100 uh, race. And that's kind of how it went. Um, so, you know, one of the things I think I would I'd do differently in the future is try to um, add a little bit more mileage during the week. As you saw, Really, my, my total mileage, weekly mileage, never got over 70 miles, 68, 70 miles, which really needed to be higher. For a 100-mile training plan, um, I really would have hoped to get up to 80 or 90 miles a week. And that could be accomplished by adding those mileage mileages during, you know, that mileage during the week. So that's one thing I think I would do differently. Um, the other thing is 12 weeks is just too short. Um, you know, it needs to be 14 or 15 weeks, I think, um, at a minimum for a hundred mile race. So, you know, um, I think in the future, I'm definitely going to do that. In fact, um, you know, this spring, I'm going to have a great opportunity to do that. Anyway, that is my, my a little bit complicated. Um, and, but that's my hundred mile plan and my couch to 100 mile plan that I used, um, kind of a self, totally a self-designed plan, and hopefully I'll be able to perfect it a little bit this spring and improve it. So hope it was helpful to somebody, and I hope you uh, enjoyed kind of hearing what I did. Uh, if you have any questions or have any advice on, on a plan that, that worked for you, feel free to make comments below. Feel free to like the video, and please subscribe to the channel if you are interested in these videos or if it was helpful to you. It certainly helps the channel out. And Look forward to going on to episode four. Not quite sure what I'm going to talk about yet, but I will uh, be posting it in the next few days. So have a good week, and we'll talk to you soon.